Hi folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today I am sharing a twofer. We're going to be making quilled blueberries with this deep blue paper and we're also going to be making some quilled cherries. I have some true red and some leaf green. All of these strips today are from Craft Harbor. Other supplies we're going to be using is my uh, Savvy Slotted Tool. could be rolling up a bit. It makes it easier on the wrist. A needle tool if you have that or another slotted tool will be fine. Whatever you prefer really will be fine. I'm going to be using both white glue, just regular Elmer's in my needle nose bottle, and I also have some clear glue. Uh, tweezers are going to come in handy. You're going to need some small scissors. I have a little damp towel here to wipe off my fingers. A ruler if you'd like to be real precise and then also uh, if you want a surface to build your fruit on you're going to use a wax covered cork board. We're going to start with the blueberries and again this paper is called Deep Blue. It is from Craft Harbor. I'll put some links down below for all my supplies as usual. It's a really deep pretty dark blue so it works perfect for the blueberries. And the strips are about 24 inches long. I'm going to be using two for each blueberry. It's going to be sort of a medium sized berry. If you want bigger blueberries, you would glue some strips to end to end, whatever length you decide your fruit is going to be, and that would be what you would use. But these are going to be kind of realistic size blueberries. So I'm rolling my strips all the way from end to end. And because it's a little long it's gonna take a second there we go take it off of my tool not letting this open up at all this is going to be a tight coil and I'm going to glue down the end now just a, a quick note about working with darker colored papers like this deep blue or anytime you use black paper I like to use clear glue for this because even though white glue dries clear it still leaves sometimes some very small white little specks on your paper and you'll that's also why I keep cleaning off my hands a lot with this dark paper these these dark colors really pick up any sort of little dust or small glue bits so you want to be really clean when you're using this color so after I made a second tight coil of the same size I'm going to start molding my fruit pushing out from the center just a bit but kind of leaving the bottom a little on the flat side. You don't want these to be really pronounced on the bottom, just a very slight dome. And that's where you see I'm kind of pushing it back in just a bit. We're using two of these because we're making 3D quilling. So these are two halves that are gonna to go together like a little sandwich, and that's gonna make the body of our berry. So after both sides are formed, I'm brushing in a little bit of white glue to the underneath side and brushing that out. You can also use a finger if you don't have a paintbrush available, but the goal is to get a little bit of glue on every layer of the inside of the dome, the part that you're not going to see on the blueberry. And that will keep your shape once it dries and then your blueberries won't collapse on themselves. After both sides are dry, you can start putting together your berry. So you can see because those strips originally were the same length, they're going to fit together just fine. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue around the edge. By the way, you could have used clear glue for the molding of the inside as well. That would have worked out just fine. A little bit of glue around the edge and then just gently place them together trying not to even though we glued the inside and the domes will keep with enough pressure they can get smushed so just gently place these together and let that set if you need to brush some excess glue off go ahead and do that but we are going to disguise that line with a little bit more of our deep blue paper. I cut about two inches or so there, put a little bit more glue right at the seam of where those two pieces came together, and then gently, once you can actually pick it up, gently wrap that center seam 
with that other strip of paper and that's going to do two things like I said it's going to disguise the line where they joined but it's also going to aid in making this look this berry look even more like a ball instead of having that sort of flattish center um, when we first put it together it looked just kind of like a dome and then a big flat part and then a dome on the other side this is going to aid in it looking a little bit more round and more like a ball a real berry instead of having that kind of flat part in the center let that set and we'll move on to the last detail and this is where we're really going to make our little berries look like actual blueberries I have one more little strip of the same deep blue paper and I'm cutting tiny triangles off of this strip. So pretty much just putting my scissors at an angle and just doing little snips back and forth. I'm going to make a few extra just in case I decide that I don't like the look of one of them. Sometimes just like that one there, they end up being not exactly triangles. Just a couple extra snips. Never hurts to have more than you need. You're only going to need four for each of the berries. And if you're not 100% sure where I'm going with this, the end of blueberries have these four little triangles that come off in a square shape. And that's where the, you know, fruit comes from a flower. That's where the flower part was. So this is where the tweezers will come in handy and I made a very small little pile of my clear glue. I'm dipping the wide end back through the glue and using my scissors, kind of putting the wide end flat so that the, the peak of the triangle is sitting up in the air. And the clear glue really works well for this. Just kind of smush it on there, push it backwards a little bit until it sticks to your tweezers. Push it backwards a little bit and you can see already that they're standing up. It's a little hard to see um, because the paper is so dark, but the base of all these little triangle bits are in a square pattern around one of the ends of the berry. And if you need more reference, you know, you can always Google what a blueberry you know that little part looks like or if you have any at home just take a peek and you'll see what I'm talking about but without these little papers they really just do look like blue blue little circular balls this these uh, triangle bits just bring the whole blueberry idea on home and this is definitely a necessary part of these little berries And that is pretty much all it takes to make a quilling paper blueberry. They're so cute. There we go, kind of a better image of the top. And you can make, ooh, rolling away. You can make these in different sizes. Make bigger ones. You can make smaller ones. Like I said, it just depends on how big the strips of paper from the beginning are I made a little bowl here and that's just made by putting lots and lots and lots of brown strips of quilling paper together and rolling them up into a tight coil and forming them into a bowl Ooh. there we go little bowl of <laughs> paper blueberries let's move on to the second part of our projects for today we're making some cherries kind of similar starting point to this fruit we're going to be using four strips to make the body of the berries but we're going to need a little bit more of this true red paper in a bit starting off by tearing the ends of our paper remember torn edges help the quilling paper glue down a little bit more smoothly. And because cherries are bigger than blueberries, I'm actually gonna be using two strips of this red paper and gluing those end to end 
So think back in how I was talking before about how if you wanted to make your blueberries bigger, you would add more strips. This is how you would do that. Just a little bit of glue on one end and stack another sheet on top of that. Pretty seamless. Now this paper is about 48 inches or so long. Just like with the other project, I'm going to be rolling this all the way from end to end. I'm using this, um, it's called a Savvy Slotted Tool. Link to that in the description box for the video. Um, I like it because you're not actually turning your wrist with this, you're just turning your fingers. It is still hard to do a really long paper like this without taking it off your tool. So that's why I had to finish manually rolling it with my hand, but still not a big deal. It just takes a few extra seconds. Um, if you have an automatic quilling tool, that's always nice with projects like this because it just zip, zips it on by. Um, I have a video about that. I can link to that um, in the description box for this project too, because they're not super expensive, but they definitely save some time if you're making a lot of projects, especially 3D projects where you need a few strips together, they can be handy. So I finally got to the end of this roll, I'm not letting it go at all, because I don't want it to open up. And a little bit of white glue is fine for this type of paper. Glue the end down, and you're going to use the other two strips to make a second coil same exact size and I'm not exactly sure what happened to the footage of me doming out these cherry halves here I apologize for not showing that part specifically but just like we did with the blueberries you're gonna push the center out but this time you can make it not flat on the bottom they can just be a true kind of domed shape you're going to put some glue on the inside and brush it out just like before this time though, we're making a small dent in the top or whichever end you consider the top, maybe do it where the paper seam is. Small dent, just push down while you're pushing the corners up. So it sort of looks like a little cat with ears because cherries have kind of a flattish part at the top where the stem goes in. So again, we made the dome, we put some glue all over the inside, brushed it out, and then I used a needle tool, but you can use, you can use your slotted tool or a toothpick or something just to gently push in one side of it to make sort of a dent. That is where the stem is going to go. After that all dries, a little bit of glue around the edge, just like before, we're gonna be putting these two halves together. These might not fit exactly the same together. Once you've pushed that dent on the top, it can kind of warp the sides and make it so there might be a gap at some point around the edge of your cherries. Do not concern yourself about that because we are going to cover it up. Just like before, we're gonna grab another small piece of the same red and we're gonna wrap it around. Just like before, we're doing that to hide the seam in case there is any uneven bits that might happen specifically on these cherries, but also it aids in the whole 3D aspect of this quilling project. So a little bit of glue all the way around. It's up to you if you want to keep going where the kind of indentation part is on the top. If you want to, you can just measure your strip um, around the parts. Start on one side right after the dent and then stop at the dent. That's pretty much what I'm doing here. So I didn't cover that part because that's going to be covered up in the next phase of this project. Set that aside and we can start working on that last part, which is making the stem. That's where this, uh, the leaf green paper comes in. I uh, take about two, two and a half inches of the leaf green paper and folding that over because we want this to be nice and sturdy. We're going to be making a double thick strip, but 
you're going to fold out about a quarter of an inch off of either side. And then we're going to put some glue all along one side of the oops, throwing things all along one side of the original folded part. And we're going to start at the center and then stop where the little feet are that we folded outwards just a second ago. Smooth all that together so it's nice and flat. That part is going to be the stem and this part is going to be where it attaches to the fruit. And that again is where that little indent comes in from the beginning. A little bit of glue right at that part there where it's a little bit flatter on the top. Just a small speck of glue and then bloop, that stem goes right on that little indent and then you can use any kind of tool you have or just your fingers kind of press it in there and wipe away that little extra bit of glue and that is about it for that step but then we have one more tiny little detail just to really bring the cherry idea home if you've ever looked at a cherry stem they're a tiny bit wider at the top where it meets the plant so we're going to take another couple of inches of the same leaf green paper with a speck of glue on the end of the stem and then just wrap that strip around a few times. You want to make sure that your, your stem is already really secure on your berry or you could always do this part before you attached your stem. Either way will work out just fine if you're nervous about the cherry falling off the stem at this point. A little bit of glue once you're happy with how that looks. And that's about it. When your stem is nice and dry, you can really curve it and that will help. There we go. That looks even better. Blue. There you go. Sometimes they stand up. Oh, that one didn't want to stand up. That's okay. You can make variations on the cherries as well. There are lots of different reds out there. This one's a different brand, so it's a little bit paler. This one's really pale, and that one is a deep rose from Craft Harbor. You can do two cherries together. So in that case, instead of wrapping just one cherry, I glued two stems together and then wrapped them both at the same time. And I have another little bowl here made the same way, but kind of a wood grain situation by doing three different colors of browns together. Um, so it looks a little bit more realistic than just a plain brown bowl. And there's your two projects together. With both of these, it's all about that little extra detail, the indent on the top of the cherries, wrapping that stem, putting those little triangles on the blueberries. That's what's really going to drive this home. And I know that 3D quilling isn't everyone's cup of tea, and that's fine. Um, just always a nice idea to expand your skills, even if you don't like this particular project, using these 3D skills to making the sort of projects that you do enjoy. As always, leave any questions or comments you have. I will answer them as soon as I can. I will leave all the links you need to videos and supplies in the description box for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll be around for the next one and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.